can you light it on fire? Will you please light it on fire? I have insurance. So in 2015, two things that I really love collided. One, Cannonball. We did the 2015, the 2904. That was the year that Monsieur Ed Bolian joined and destroyed the race. And the other thing is I had lo I've been looking for and finally found a GMC RV from the early 70s. Why? Six wheels. Love six wheelers. And this was kind of a dream vehicle of mine for a long time. And I was looking for a short wheelbase version, which they only made a few hundred of. And I couldn't find one in California or on the West Coast. And I looked and I looked and I found an orange one in wonderful 70s orange in Maryland. So I sent my brother to look for it. And I'm like, you got to go check this out. He knows nothing about cars, but he's a great observer and, a, and uh, sent me tons of pictures. And he's like... It's a RV. So I bought it and I had to try to figure a way of getting it across the country. So I figured, perfect. I'm going to bring it across the country in the 2904 because it makes total sense to take an ancient RV that you know nothing about, get it running, and send it barreling across the country as fast as possible in the hands of a stranger. So that's exactly what I did. We took it up to Pennsylvania. My good friend Galway bravely drove it up to Pennsylvania, barely running, and took it to the East Coast expert, apparently, in these things. And I say apparently, because it didn't work out so well. He put on new tires and the rear airbags and uh, got it ready for the 2904, a few days in time for it. We get the RV ready, and we bring it down to Brooklyn for the party, and I've got uh, a couple of friends of mine who are willing to drive it across. Now, Karina and her crew, and Lori and the bunch, those all, they're, fantastic ladies from Brooklyn and they were like, we'll help you get it up and get it going. And Karina's like, I'll get a little crew of Brooklyn hipsters and we're going to drive it across the country and have a party and play guitar on the way and the whole thing. And it was all great. They'll go nice and slow. You know, they're not really racing. There hadn't been an RV and a Cannonball event since the Cannonball. Famously, there was the Travco RV that ran in the original Cannonballs and the, the great spaghetti incident happened in that, which you'll have to look up. So I was thinking, great, Brooklyn Hipsters, big orange RV, they'll be fine. I, t I just had spent like $3,000 on it. It's going to make it. So they set off. We, had, that year, were racing in our Oldsmobile silhouette, dressed up as the uh, Star Trek shuttle. And we were going to beat Ed Bolian uh, AMG in an Oldsmobile silhouette. We were going to do it foiled by the RV. I'm sure we would have done it if we hadn't been foiled by the RV. But the RV set off and immediately I start getting phone calls of, it's not going very fast. Uh, it's losing air here in, on the airbags. We got a gas leak somewhere and they would stop every 100 miles and something worse and worse is going with it. And I'm thinking, how far is it going to make it? And they're like, we're doing 55. And that's about all we can do. We're doing 50. That's all we can do. And it started slowing down and finally broke down. And it's the middle of the night and we're racing across in the silhouette behind them. I'm like, oh no, please, please make it. And then I get a call and slightly panicked. The RV's on fire. What? Yeah, it's on fire, the fire department's here. And I'm thinking it's burning the ground. Really at that point, I was like, is everybody safe? Good, is it burning the ground? Great. Let's get some airline tickets and get you home. But no, what had happened is they had a backfire. I found this out later after looking underneath the RV, which we named Orange Julius, and shall go by that name for all time. Julius had backfired and blown the mufflers open on the top, right underneath the rear floor, and had heated up the rivets that held the floor to the frame. The rivet then got so hot it ignited the carpet under one of the seats which then just burst into flames, which they put out with like Sprite and water or something and threw in there. And the, but the fire department saw, they, somebody called it in and I'm like, just don't let them go inside with the hoses and ruin it. They're like, okay, everything's fine. The fire's out. 
uh, we'll get going again. They get going again and about a short period of time later, it stopped again. It's not moving, it won't start. I'm like, what's wrong? And they're not mechanical. They're wonderful people and I love every one of them, but they, you know, I feel a little bad I'd sent them with a toolkit and no knowledge of the car across the country, but there you have it. They're like, yeah, we're, we're gonna, I'm like, we, we can call a little mechanic or something to come look at it. And at this point, they're in Oklahoma. Now, there are quite a few people who know me that know I never, ever want to set foot in Oklahoma again in my life. Here's the reason why. Julius breaks down outside of uh, Tulsa. And this guy comes and fixes it. And he is literally an angel. He's like, he rebuilds the carburetor on, on it. It's barely moving. He can't get it running right. And finally, we're behind catching up. And I'm like, okay, uh, just park it. We'll have a toad and get a motel room. So we come flying in with the, the silhouette and take a 45 minute detour to unload me, put two Brooklyn hipster guitar players in the back of the silhouette and send them off for the most terrifying ride of their lives. And I stay in this room with five people that rammed in one motel room overnight to take care of Julius. Some of them take off the other day, next day. We get Julius to an RV center and then we find out that, oh, guess what? We don't, we work on RVs. We don't work on that. And I'm like, it's an RV. It's got a toilet in it and all kinds of stuff. And they're like, nope, too old. Don't want to touch it. Don't want to do anything about it. So that sweet angel of a guy comes back the next day and I'm, I pull, we get a new distributor for it. We get it running just barely. We go through the carburetor again. It's not moving. All the whole driving crew from Brooklyn has now been sent off and it's just me and him and I'm stuck in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa, Oklahoma is not a place to be stuck. I take it for a ride and it only goes 30 miles an hour. And he's all like, I know a guy who fixed one of these once. I'm like, well, that's good news. Let's take it to him. We pull up to this guy's shop and he's like, oh, I've worked on one of these before. Pop, take off the lid that's between the driver and the passenger. And he goes and does a test and we have no compression. Turns out my specialty guy in Pennsylvania did one of his specialty tricks on the carburetor that only he knew about that really brought these old RVs to life, that he rejetted it for special traveling. And what that meant is it sent so much fuel through the carburetor, it washed out the cylinders and the oil and the cylinder walls were just shiny and polished. It had just ruined the engine. And this guy's like, oh yeah, we've changed these engines before. Now to give you an idea, you can't, this is not an engine that you can like take out of the hood. It is inside. You have to take it apart pull it through the floor, carry it through the RV and out the door to get it out. And it requires a special crane. And he's like, oh, I got one of those cranes. We did one once. And sure enough, sitting in the corner, mysteriously, is an GMC RV engine removing crane. I'm like, I'm in the right place. So I left it with him and a month goes by and he's all like, well, we got the engine rebuilt. I'm like, great, I'll pay you for that. And he's all like, but now we have a problem with the gas tanks. Gas tanks? Because it ran literally over a thousand miles to your place. Now they got there's two big 25 gallon tanks in it. We got to pull the gas tanks out. Everybody who's restored a car has gotten to this point where you just kind of like, I don't even care anymore. Just, just spend the money or put it in the dumpster. So I'm hoping again, it's catching on fire. So, or somebody steals it. We get both gas tanks done. And he's all like, you know, the front end on this thing's really loose. And I'm like, yeah. He goes, I got a buddy who fixes the truck front ends. If you send the parts, he can put them on. I'm like, great. Will that get me home? Fine. So $6,000 later about on all that work in this RV I bought for $4,000 that is now $13,000 into it, I guess. And I could have bought a really nice one for 13 grand. And again, I do classic cars all the time. Even I make these silly mistakes because you get emotional about these kinds of things. And I was very emotional about Orange Julius and I dove with both feet in to being foolish. So, and that's for my wife. I was foolish, but she supported me. Anyway, the Julius, he says it's done. And I'm working at Canapa and it's an intense environment. I can't just take the, like a week off and go get Julius. So <laughs> I send the person who worked for me at Canapa because I was like, oh yeah, he's taking some personal days and I paid him some money. And Zach Todd headed off to Oklahoma to bring back Orange Julius. I got his ticket and I'm like, it's gonna be fun. And he actually was the one who went and grabbed the silhouette 
for me. I think we bought it in Kansas. And he's the one who drove it out to California to get ready for the run. And he's one of the greatest guys on the planet. So I'm like, go. He gets it. He calls me. This isn't working so well. I'm like, what's wrong? He goes, it's not running right. Well, where are you? He goes, I'm 100 miles west of Tulsa. I go, are you out of Oklahoma yet? He's like, no. I'm approaching Texas. And it stops. And I'm like, can you light it on fire? Will you please light it on fire? I have insurance. So he calls a tow truck company, $770 tow back to the engine guys. And they're like, oh, well, you know, uh, it might be your carburetor. Because the car, they start blaming the angel guy who rebuilt the carburetor. There's something wrong with the carburetor. I'm like, just fix it. And they take another month of hemming and hawing, and they're like, it's done. I go, will it drive to California? Because it drove really crappily to Oklahoma. And at this point, I am convinced. That, and I, to this day, I believe there is like a cabal of witches in Oklahoma that have like passed curses on you when you come over the border and you, are, you may never leave. Like you are trapped in that state for eternity. I think everybody who lives there actually came from somewhere else at some point and never were allowed to leave. And they're all stuck in Oklahoma and they just there for the cheap gas. I fly there and I'm like, does it work? Yes, it works. It doesn't work. I get 40 miles out of time and it starts cacking and balking. And I'm like, I, I, I don't care. I, I lost all feeling of safety or caring of anything on the planet. And I was just like, I'm driving it. If I'm driving 45 miles an hour in California, I am doing it. And it cacks and cacks and it's driving 55-ish around there and it's not running well and it's, it's not overheating. Everything else seems, it's got an exhaust leak. The exhaust they just put on, which I found out later, they didn't put an exhaust gaskets on it. Okay, and it's cacking and I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna kill somebody. And I swear, I swear that the moment I crossed the Oklahoma border into Texas, the Julius went from cack, cack, cack to and I was doing 65, 70 miles an hour as I crossed the line. There's the sign, it started running right. I escaped the witches of Oklahoma. I, I escaped the curse somehow, I broke away. And I started going across the panhandle of Texas and I'm like, this is run out, running too bad. We kept Julius for the next five years and had the best trips in him. He was the best RV ever. We loved him. I couldn't stop at a gas station or pull him around a corner without somebody stopping and asking me what he was or their uncle had one. And that is the beautiful thing about owning classic vehicles. You come to learn owning a GMC motorhome that if you have one, you're more likely gonna end up with two or three. They have a tendency to multiply. So I drove mine to work. I drove Julius to work to show everybody the ridiculousness I had gotten into. And I park it, I come out at night after work and there's a business card on the front seat. Somebody had come inside and put their business card on the front seat. So I call the number and it's this older woman and she's all like, is that your RV? I'm like, yeah. She goes, ah, oh, is it for sale? And I said, no. She goes, well, I have one. I'm like, good for you. Do you wanna see it? Okay? She goes, we're selling it. I'm like, then why did you ask if I was selling mine? Like, I, I, I gotta find out what's going on. So I took lunch, I go over, and sweet old couple, the guy who owns it is a 92 year old retired church organist. And he, in his house that he built from scratch, is a full blown church organ with the pipes and everything where he used to practice. He was awesome. So we go out and look at this RV. It's half covered in moss but it's got some great parts on it that Julius doesn't. doesn't have, he had uh, aluminum wheels and headers on it. I'm like, I can just get the parts off of it. If I can get it cheap enough, I can get it running. And he's like, well, you know, do you want it? I'm like, well, maybe. He goes, I need to get it out of here. It's gotta get out of the side yard. Blocking the side yard, we're gonna do some construction. I'm like, well, I can probably get it out of here by the weekend. And he's all, great, but I have to charge you for it. I'm all, okay. He goes, $1. And I was like, excuse me? He's like, $1. So I reach in my pocket. I thought this was all kind of a joke. I pull a dollar and I give it to him. He's all like, good. And he turns around and he gives it to his wife. And he turns back to me and he goes, she doesn't trust me with money. And I'm like, all right. So we named that RV Bill for the dollar bill he cost me. And I brought it home. And 
I lent Julius to my friend Scotty and Scotty took it to the Monterey Historics and loved it. And he's all like, how much for Bill? And I'm like, you, you take Bill. And I took the bits off of Bill and he took Bill. Bill ended up being traded to another friend of mine for a, a, a trailer and then Bill disappeared. So why Bill is in the, these transition moments. And again, I went across the country for a 23 footer and there was one five minutes from my work. I'm driving to work and this is maybe six months later. I look on the side of the road and there's another 23 footer, just like mine, side bath, which were relatively rare. And I'm like, I gotta pull over and take some pictures of it because maybe it can give me some ideas to fix up mine. So I go over, I take some pictures of it. I put my business card on it just to chat and I get a call. Hey, you, you interested in buying it? I'm like, no, I was just, I was just taking pictures. I'd like to see it. Well, come on over, another older guy. And he had bought it to travel across the country, but now he was in a wheel, like one of those little mobile mobility scooters and his son wanted him to sell it. And he's like, well, I'm going to sell it. I'm like, great, sell it on Craigslist. I go, I took a bunch of pictures of it. I'll give you my pictures and you can make a Craigslist. And I felt, you know, you want to be generous towards people in the hobby and to older folks. And I was like, listen, I'll help you. And so I helped him make a Craigslist ad and he wanted like 8,500 bucks for it. And he just done the carburetor and all kinds of stuff. I'm like, that's totally worth it. Very drivable. And its name was Ondigo because the license plate was on D go. And I'm like, I just want to buy your license plate. Tell you the truth. That thing's awesome. He calls me up a month later. Nobody wants to buy it. They're all idiots. Blah, 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 blah. He goes, you want to buy it? I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want to buy it. I don't want, I, I have one. I spent a lot of money. Don't want to buy it. And so I helped him again with his ad. I went in and rewrote more pictures. And then he calls me like a few weeks later. You still, want, you, you still want it? I'm like, I don't want it. And then his son calls me and he's all like, you have to take it. I'm like, I don't want it. I have one. He's all, just name a number. And just to scare him away, I was like, $4,000. And he's like, fine. I'm like, oh, oh no. <laughs> and I had this idea of doing uh, an RV rental, but not to drive them, to be parked in your driveway for extra room in the holidays. And I was gonna call it RV and B. And we bring RVs to you and it's an extra room when you need it. And that way I don't have to worry about people driving them and wrecking them. You just set them up really nice, do a cool little kitsch, little camping setup, someone's driveway. And so I'm like, well, maybe I'll buy them and do that. So again, the wife was like, all right. So we brought home Ondigo. Now I have three RVs. <laughs> and now everybody's like, oh, you're the RV guy. You're the GMC RV guy. No, I don't want to be the GMC. No. And then I started getting more phone calls, people offering. I'm like, I don't want any more of these. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Bill was on his way. We brought Ondigo and Julius back to our new home. And then COVID hit. And the idea of RV and B kind of fell apart. So it was time. We sold Ondigo. He found a great new owner in Fresno, California, who's going to pit like a martini or golf livery on it, which I was wholly behind, a big Porsche enthusiast. And a uh, little sad to say, two weeks ago, we sold Julius. And after you put so much emotion and time and family time, it's a really kind of, it was interesting to sell him because I've sold tons of cars and different things, but you're like, bye Julius. Thank you, thank you. Off the Record can help you find a speeding ticket or traffic citation no matter where you get it. You just download their app, take a photo of your ticket, and they match you with the best local attorney to achieve the best possible outcome. They can help you avoid costly insurance premium increases, points on your license, and other issues. And when you register, use the code VINWIKI for a discount on their services. If you don't have a ticket that you need to fight right now, go ahead and download their app and register using the VINWIKI code, and that will reserve your discount for whenever you might need it in the future. It's a great thing to have in your your pocket when you never know who's going to pull up behind you on your next road trip.